This week on The Bomber Show, all clear for takeoff, we detail the Essendon Football Club flight plan to Premiership glory. This is a critical project for our club to make sure that we get behind. Gus and Zach are dressed for success. Tate Pears is in to strengthen the team that overcame the Swans and we'll get the final word from Heard. We hear from Mark Thompson plus your votes on the plays of the week. Tough kick to Mark, good spot though. Carlisle again! Has he got a taste for the mark? Hello and welcome to the latest edition of The Bomber Show, growing in popularity every week and we expect a big spike in viewer numbers this week with a host of Hollywood types keen to see if our feature guest is really as natural a talent as his audition tape suggests. I want to play this one too, coach. I know how to play. We're about to run ahead. You can't just come here for one come game. Come on, coach! What do you make of that? Oscar worthy, Andrew Welsh, thank you for joining us. No worries, thank you very much. Look, I think that's something that I'm just going to tick the boxes and, and experience and, uh, and not put too much into it, else into it, I think. But. Assistant coach Sean Wellman joins us. What do you make? What's your critical appraisal of Andrew Welsh's acting debut? That was uh, very good. It's been reviewed um, very positively too, so yeah, some, some hidden talent there, Woosh. On to serious matters. A huge game this weekend, Wally, against the Western Bulldogs. It would be nice to get this win locked away and, and hopefully go a step further to securing a September berth. Yeah, it would. Um, obviously, the, the performance against Sydney was fantastic from, uh, from the team and uh, you know, the Bulldogs' form has been pretty good over the last six or seven weeks, so it's another big test for us as a group and uh, really important for where we want to be at the end of the year. And some, some good news, it looks like we're starting to get some more players available. We know that the club's been really hard hit by injuries, but it looks like slowly it's starting to build towards a best 22. Yeah, it is. Obviously, Tate Pears is back this week, um, which, is, which is really good after missing a couple of weeks. And, uh, and Andrew and uh, Nathan Lovett Murray came back through the reserves last week and, and, and were in some really good form. And we got three back last week in uh, Dustin Fletcher, Michael Hurley, and uh, Heath Hocking. So the team's starting to strengthen at the right time of year, which is really positive. Certainly is. Well, beating the Bulldogs on Saturday will go a long way to gaining a place on the joyride called Finals Football. And to take us through the team, it's fantastic that we can get the word directly from James Hurd. Round 21, Essendon versus the Western Bulldogs. Uh, another massive game for our club um, in terms of finals, hopefully, and uh, have a win, and we never know what can happen. Uh, there's been one change this week. Michael Ross has gone out of the team. Um, very good for his first two games, but uh, we've been able to bring Tate Pears back into the, into the uh, team, which is fantastic news for our back line and also for Tate after suffering a small um, fracture of his, the top of his leg, but looks like that has healed. So really important game for us, obviously, uh, the Western Bulldogs can play some really good football, had some interrupted uh, season with injuries, but um, still a very good team, so we need to be at our best. And hopefully another performance like Saturday night against the Swans and we can come out victorious. Thank you. We certainly hope it's not quite as close as that game against the Swans. I think it gave a, a few of us heart attacks and Sean Wellman in the coach's box, it would have been a little scary. Tate Pears coming in to bolster the defence, which is going to be really important against a team like the Western Bulldogs. Yeah, it is. They've obviously got some really dangerous forwards. Um, Barry Hall um, and, and Daniel Jury in Syracuse are probably the two that have been in fantastic form. And uh, they've got some uh, young players coming in and Dow House and these types of players as well. So um, no doubt our defence and our whole team's going to have our work cut out on Saturday night. How far off is that team from what you would like the perfect ideal world 22 to be? Um, obviously, well, she's coming back, sitting next to me. Um, some experience there, and Nathan Lovett Murray. There's, um, there's guys. I think it's a good situation. We have had a lot of injuries throughout the year, um, particularly the last five or six weeks. But I think having guys performing on the just on the cusp of the team is really healthy. And I think we had that at the start of the year. And uh, with guys coming back into the team, we're starting to get that again. So, uh, what the best 22 is, I don't know. But it'll be the the best team for for any given day. And uh, and, and again, pressure from, from outside the team's really healthy. And Andrew, you'll be pushing your case for selection in the VFL this weekend? Yeah, I got through a, uh, a game last week, which, uh, which was really good, and uh, looking to back that up this week. 
Well, we're just having a look at some highlights from the skipper, Joe Watson. 31 touches on the weekend against the Sydney Swans. And, Andrew, he's leading so brilliantly. And it's great to see him come into the side and hit the ground running after being out for a while. Yeah, Joe had a fantastic year last year. And, and to back that up, he's been buoyed by a couple of little hamstring injuries this year. But the way he comes back from that just shows the, the amount that he works when he is in, in rehab to be able to get back and play at that standard is, is why he's the captain of our club. What sort of character is Kyle Remus? We saw him kick four goals on the weekend and be a really important player against the Sydney Swans. And he's been in and out of the team at different stages, but very important when he can play like that. Yeah, it is. And, uh, I mean, he's been he's really improved as a player throughout the year. He spent a lot of, lot of time early in the year at VFL um, working on his game and the areas of his game. He's got a long way to go, but... Um, I think um, you know, Essendon supporters seeing him play this year would see that he's improved and become a, a more well-rounded player, not just a, a good player with the ball. And uh, you know, he's still focusing on other areas of his game. But uh, to be able to play against well against quality opposition is really important. He's been able to do that even against Collingwood. He kicked three goals, so that's an important step in his career. Boys, Barry Hall kicked two goals back in round one uh, when we played them the last time, but kicked five last start, which was against the West Coast Eagles. How do we combat big, bad, bustling Barry, Sean? Um, yeah, he's, he's in good form. He's obviously a key. I think um, what we did well earlier in the year was the ball didn't get in there very very much, so it's hard to score when the ball's not going in there. So that's the first thing. I um, want to try and prevent a lot of opportunities. And when it does go in there, there was a fair bit of pressure on the ball as well. That certainly helps our, our key defenders and at the right time to be able to help out one-on-one -on -one because he's such a good one-on-one -on -one player and they do look for him, look for him a lot. Well, guys, it's been a massive week at Bomberland with details of a $5 million fan fundraiser release to help the club spread its wings at a brand new state-of-the-art training complex near Melbourne Airport. The Essendon vision is to create the best training and community facility of any team in Australia. Let's take a look. At more than double the size of the current Windy Hill home base, the new precinct will include a purpose-built indoor training space and two ovals. One the size of the MCG, the other of Etihad Stadium. As we move towards free agencies, we move towards uh, an era in football where the salary cap, the draft, restrict the way you can attract players. Having the best facilities, having the best coaches, having the best coaching program is instrumental in attracting the best young kids and also the best talent in this country to your footy club. But the world's best practice doesn't come cheap. A total cost of $30 million will be met through a combination of government and AFL funding, $9 million from Essendon Club coffers and $5 million from Bomber members. All donations will be recognised on a club honour wall at the new facility. So there you have it. And to play your role in securing Essendon's position at the top of the ladder on and off the field, log on to theflightplan.com.au or simply call the club on 03 9230 Guys, it looks pretty, pretty impressive. And Andrew, I bet you can't wait to be there and enjoying those new facilities. Yeah, look, I'd, I'd love to still be around when they're, when they're built. So I hope everyone... Uh starts putting some money up so they can get that, uh, that underway. But look, the players are really excited to be getting out there. It's a fantastic complex from what we've seen. And um, we're still going to have our heartland at, at, at Windy Hill for the community. But um, for our club and our playing list to, uh, to keep up, we have to move out there and we're all looking forward to it. Sean, some great news earlier in the week uh, with Brent Prismore coming through his surgery well and obviously on the road to recovery. And his future also is uh, assured at Windy Hill. Yeah, it is. We see him, uh, Brent, as an important part of our future and uh, it's a really unfortunate injury. He's, he's, he's been through it before when he uh, played at Geelong and uh, he's been good enough to fight back from that, that first uh, reconstruction and now that's the other knee, but uh, we thought he was really improving. He's a real pro in everything he does and uh, um, he'll be back better, better than ever and uh, certainly the club will support him in that. Sean, thank you very much for joining us. We'll let you get back to plotting how to bring down the Western Bulldogs on the weekend. All right, thank you. We'll stick with us on the Bomber Show as we ride the Essendon roller coaster of season 2011 and hear from senior assistant coach Mark Thompson. But on the way to the break, here is Brent Prismal on his recovery plans. Um, I spoke to the doctors after the surgery last week and um, they were pretty buoyant with how it went and um, said that there wasn't as much damage as last time, which which is good and hopefully that can sort of get me back a little bit quicker but um, yeah at the same time it's uh, it's still going to be sort of six to eight months so hopefully um, it's on the, the shorter side but um, yeah see how we go.
energy prices are on the rise, and we're all aware of the benefits of using solar to power our home. True Value Solar are the solar specialists, and one of Australia's largest installers of solar power. So call True Value Solar for your solution today. Yeah, you tell them, Hootie. Call 13 Solar for the best deals under the sun. Television is about to change forever. The revolutionary new Samsung Smart TV will immerse you in full HD 3D vision that will take your breath away. You'll be able to access your compatible multimedia library with Search All, along with your favourite websites. The new Samsung Smart TV. Immerse yourself in a world of endless entertainment. He certainly gets around the true value solar man, doesn't he? Well, welcome back to The Bomber Show, where your input and feedback is always welcome via the Essendon Facebook page or, of course, via Twitter on hashtag The Bomber Show. And Andrew Welsh, this one is for you. Now, this is from Taylor. Do you like playing football or acting better? And would you rather a premiership flag or a Logie? Well, I actually enjoy playing football a lot more because it's uh, something I'm half OK at and acting I'm not, uh, not that good at. So I think Angus Momfries might be the one who's uh, pushing to the front for the Logie and I'll take the premiership any day of the week. What if we upped it to a, an Academy Award? Oh, well, look, if I'm living in a big palace in Beverly Hills and uh, <laughs> having some of the pool parties that they enjoy over there... I'd, Mates I'd with Brad and Angelina, Oscar, actually, you yeah. might do it. it could go all right. <laughs> all right, well, it certainly has been an up-and-down season for players and fans alike in 2011. With just three games to go, we thought we would examine it in detail this week. And, of course, it started with a flurry beating the Western Bulldogs in round one, which shot the Bombers to the very top of the ladder. Some good form early and then a run of five losses between round nine, which was Richmond, and then round 14, Hawthorne really saw that graph go down. Yeah, I think one of the most impressive things as a player of this football club is how balanced our game is now. And um, we were a really good attacking team, but we probably lacked in that defensive area where this year I think we've really balanced that up. We've had a really good start to the year and then obviously the five losses um, in a row hurt us somewhat, but... The way that we, we rebounded from those with beating Geelong and no one had, had beat them to that stage of the year. Um, then also going over to Adelaide and, and beating Adelaide over there, which we haven't done for a number of years, I think shows the, the grit of the team to be able to come out of a rut like that and really push on, which hopefully holds us in stead, good stead for the rest of the year. So in eighth position at the moment, if you can stabilise that graph now and until September, anything can happen from there. We're going to have a look at the run home. It begins, of course, on the weekend with the Western Bulldogs. Now... I can say this because I'm not playing, but I would imagine that you should really win two of those matches. West Coast at Patterson Stadium would be a really big ask and a great achievement if you can do it. And then the bye and nervous wait in round 24 if you don't have it locked up before then. Yeah, I, th I think the key for our group is to win two out of the th those three games and that really leaves a destiny in, in our own hands. We don't have to be sitting there in the bye hoping and, and, and waiting for the results to fall our way. If we win two of those three, I'm pretty sure we'll be in there with a good shot. What would it mean to this group to play finals football under James Hurd and Bomber Thompson and the new coaching panel and such youthful excitement to get so close and then not make, that, make it would be a shame? Yeah, well, to play finals and obviously to win a premiership is, is what we all play for. And, and I think our group has come along really well this year and, and we've developed in areas that we're probably lacking. And um, to finish off the year strong, I think, is going to be the key factor for us. And, and to get a few players back over the next few weeks, that's really going to bolster us. Hopefully that's a good result for us. Hopefully it is. Well, as part of the launch of Essendon's flight plan fundraiser this week, the Thompson Bomber and the C-47 Bomber came together at the site of the club's new headquarters near Melbourne Airport. And as the former Cats Premiership coach told Justin Rodsky, Essendon cannot spread its wings soon enough. Well, Bomber, an absolutely massive day for the club considering where we want to get to at Melbourne Airport. We're launching the flight plan. Uh, you must have enjoyed being here and seeing the old Bomber plane there. Yeah, being in the plane with James, it was fun. I've, I've never been in a cockpit of a plane before, so it was a, it was a real experience. Can't believe it still flies, but it, uh, it does. Um, yeah, but great to, to have the club 
really decide on their future and give us some decent facilities, which we really desperately need. We need new facilities, we need uh, you know, modern facilities, we need room and space, we need a decent oval, uh, we need decent gymnasium space, and uh, just for us to sort of do our job properly and give us the best chance of being a very good team. We still need some money though, and we need our members and supporters to contribute and be a part of the future. You'd obviously that hope that Essendon fans get on board and donate to the flight yeah, plan. I know we keep asking every year for money and we're desperate, but this is, this is one cause that's super important and critical for the future of the club for a long time. Uh, we need to get out of Windy Hill. We need to build this facility, and if we don't raise the money, then we're not going to be able to do it. And we're going to be, have to stay at Windy Hill in those poor conditions, and we don't want that. We desperately need, need your help this, uh, this time, so please help us. Well, still to come on The Bomber Show, President David Evans has a message for you, and Andrew Welsh takes us through the plays of the week. Plus, we're about to see why, as an actor, Michael Long makes a great footballer. Longy is literally a big part of the Gen for Men challenge, and you can join in too by logging on to genformen.com.au and signing up for the Match Fit program. The new ad shot this week will hit your screen soon. We can't wait to catch it. What if I told you I've signed a Norm Smith medalist and a Coleman medalist? Great. Do you want to meet him? I'll be with you in a minute, coach. How are we going to get a match fit? Join Longy and Scotty as they get match fit again. Lose 10 kilos for $10. Call or SMS footy to 1300 for Jenny. What are you doing next for a set of hands? <laughs> Energy prices are on the rise, and we're all aware of the benefits of using solar to power our home. True Value Solar is Australia's largest solar specialist, so they can install a system that will really save you. <laughs> what you do with those savings each year is up to you. It's official. The carbon tax will mean rising electricity prices. With thousands of dollars of government rebates still available, there's never been a better time to go solar. Call 13 Solar for the best deals under the sun. All right, we're here at the Soho Workshop on Chapel Street. We're here to uh, try on a few suits. We've got David Zakarakis with us here, the fashion guru of the Essendon Footy Club. Zaka, what sort of style suit are you going to look at today? Uh, I don't know, I might look at a slim black suit with a little, nice little slim black tie. Might fit nice, but yeah, what are you going to look at? Uh, I think I'm going to go a grey pinstripe, but we'll, we'll get in there and have a look and try some suits on. <laughs> Don't the boys look very handsome? David Zaharakis plays his 50th game this week and he's already trying on his Soho gear for the Brownlow. Hope he gets a ticket. I know, they're not bad, some of these young guys these days, yeah, <laughs> counting their chickens before they hatch and um, getting in there. But look, there are some of the young boys coming through the club these days. They, uh, they're importing cars from overseas, these big American Cadillac things and uh, buying mansions out, out of the suburbs. So they're, uh, they're on the good dollars, the young fellas. Good to see. Sounds good. OK, well, you're watching The Bombers Show, where special guest Andrew Welsh will run through the plays of the week in just a moment. But first, Bomber Chairman David Evans with a personal appeal for your involvement in the flight plan campaign. Hi, Bomber fans. A massive week for the club this week, not only because we're playing the Western Bulldogs on Saturday night, but because we've launched our new facility program and project from Tullamarine here. So I've, just down the road from the new Tullamarine project and it's something that I want Bomber fans to really get behind. This is a critical project for our club to make sure that we get behind and ensure that we get the funding to ensure that our players and coaches have got the very best facilities to educate, train and help our players to become the very best they can for future generations of Essendon supporters. So if you can dig deep, uh, we understand that uh, economic times are getting tougher but if you can afford to uh, give the club some money to ensure that this does happen because it is very much critical for the future of our club going forward. Thank you. OK, Andrew, it's time now for you to channel your inner Bruce McAvaney and Brian Taylor and help us through our Plays of the Week and tell us who won. Lovely. 
Well, the first uh, play of the week we have here, Kyle, the Bulldog Reamers. And as Sean spoke about earlier, he's really worked hard on his uh, defensive game. And I think that's why you're seeing some great rewards from Kyle here. Real pressure closing in here. Had a big job on Ty Canelli, who provides a lot of run for Sydney. Did a great job of, him, of nullifying that, but then also providing four great goals for the boys. And here we see a, a little bit of special Kyle Reamers. David Zaharak was inside, wasn't too happy. But Kyle went for goal, and that's uh, that's what we love about the Bulldog. The next play of the week, we have big Jakey Carlisle, such a raw talent for the footy club. Um, started playing now at defence, but he's got one of the best hands I've ever seen in a contested mark. And on one, I think that he could probably even sneak up forward as his career goes on and, and be a real pro prolific goal kicker for us. And it wasn't this great. This is what we need this week against the Bulldogs. The fans getting behind us. I must say, I was sitting there and thought that he was going to kick it. And you see the boys doing their best to put him off. It was coming in straight and then swayed late, which I must say, I was happy. So I could imagine how happy the fans would be. Absolutely sensational stuff. I think everyone's hearts were in their mouths. And you said you thought he was going to kick it. I think most people thought that. Tell us who's won, Andrew. And there the winner is the Bomber fans. The put-off of Adam Goods <laughs> with 68% was uh, my choice as well. Excellent. How could it not be? OK, and to the tweet of the week, which is from Jared Kent, who says he's looking forward to contributing to the flight plan for Essendon. He feels it's good to help and be part of that. Come on, the mighty Bombers. Thank you very much for joining us. Good luck in the VFL on the weekend, Andrew. We look forward to seeing you in uh, the senior side very, very soon. Thank you, sir. Okay, well, remember, we love your thoughts and feedback on Facebook or via Twitter, hashtag The Bombers Show, and we'll see you all again very soon. Go Bombers.